Okay, today I'm going to show you how to take a standard 24-hour Utilitech light timer that you pick up at Lowe's and convert it into a timer <clears throat> that runs on a cycle of about 30 minutes. <clears throat> I'm going to use this for my air exchange system so that way I can have the fan set to be on for 5 minutes and off for 10 minutes, on for 5 minutes, off for 10 minutes, and so on and so on and so on. That will give me four 5-minute air filtration cycles per hour. So I'll get four fresh air exchanges per hour. Uh, to do this mod, all that you need is a flathead screwdriver, a nail, super glue, and a syringe to apply the super glue. That's the best way I found how to do it, because you have to be very precise. Uh, special note, the screws that they use in the backs of these things are a modified Phillips head screw that has three flanges instead of four. This prevents a normal Phillips head screwdriver from being able to fit into the screw and unscrew it. So what I did is I found a flathead screwdriver that has a tapered tip that tapers down to about three or four millimeters and that's able to fit into the flanges and catches them but you have to really wrench it down in there and finagle with it. So once you have the screws out then the timer pops right apart, top comes right off, and you just set that aside. And let's take a look at the inside of the timer here. This is the gearbox, and this is the mechanism that allows the switch to turn on. So as the tabs are pressed down, they rotate through around here, and when the tabs are pressed down, it catches on this thing, and as the timer rotates, then that'll push that down and that flips the switch on. Now with a previous mod that I found from THC Farmer, <clears throat> what he did is he reorganized the gears in the gearbox such that the lowest gear is bypassed. And that's this gear right here. He was bypassing that gear, um, removing one of the cycles, speeding everything up. But the problem with that, it makes the timer turn at the right speed, but then when you reassemble, the whole thing, it won't flip on because the engine or the motor doesn't have enough oomph to be able to push the tabs over this little bump and then cause the switch to the press. So it just gets caught about halfway right there, then never fully engages. So the timer just stalls. So I tinkered around with it for a while and came up with a new mod that corrects that. And it really isn't much more difficult. It's slightly more involved, but not extraordinarily so. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop open the gearbox and that's done by there's a little tab on either side of the gearbox here so you just kind of use your fingernail and you can pop that right open. Do it carefully. I popped off one of the tabs the first time I took it off and on, on this side and it all still snaps together fine but just uh, be mindful of how you do it. <clears throat> And here we have the disassembled gearbox and the, the motor sticks behind and you can just pull that out and set it, set it aside. So now what we do is, some tweezers are handy for this, disassemble the gearbox and do it in such a way that you, you can you know, keep the gears organized. Now, take the two pins that stick into the top and stick them both into the, their slots in the bottom. And they're not screwed in or glued or anything. They just pop right into the holes. Okay, the next step is put the gear, the first few gears back. So, Okay, so this is, let's, let's call this column, the, the gears that go in here are column one, gears for column two, this is the drive shaft, and then this is the motor. So we're going to put gear three 
back on the column two and that just fits right down on there and then we're going to put the drive gear back on and we're putting putting them all back in their original orientation nothing is being inverted and as you put the gears back you want to make sure that they re-engage with each other and that they lock into place and we'll put the red gear back and this is where we make the change so what you want to do now is go ahead and pull out the pin for the second column and just leave the gear where it was and what we're going to do is we're going to take these two gears here and these this is gear one and two for column two so the central column there the pin that we just took out and both gears they're the same size they're identical one's just yellow and one's just white so we're going to take the yellow gear and put it back onto the axle there and set that down set that aside and now we're going to take the third gear for column two and we'll use the nail or anything you have that can scratch and we're going to score around the axle you can see there's a little hole in the center maybe where the axle goes so what we're going to do is just scratch the hell out of the plastic all around where that axle goes and that'll create little holes for the glue to grab onto and you'll get a much better adhesion between the two gears so once you have the gears scored take your needle and suck up some super glue into it if you can get the lid off okay whatever so suck up some glue into your syringe and apply a very very small amount around the bottom of the top gear around the hole where the axle goes and you'll want to be incredibly careful when you do this to make sure that you don't get any glue into the axle hole because that will really screw up the design so once you've deposited some glue around the axle hole then very very carefully again because you want to watch you know the glue with this stuff slide the gear back onto the axle so that way it's resting on top of the first gear and just hold them in place for a few minutes here are two gears from another timer that I previously modded and the glue is already dried on them so we'll just go ahead and use those for the time being you can see that it's two gears that are stacked on top of each other they're glued and they're fixed together so once you have that then go ahead and oh yeah one one other thing is when the gears are drying the glue is drying on the axle uh, I would advise that you like once the glue is set just a little bit go ahead and keep the gears on the axle but spin them together and make sure that they're spinning together so that way you don't break the glue but what this will do is this will prevent the glue from drying the gears to the axle and you need them to spin around the axle so I recommend that you do that at least while the glue is setting to make sure it doesn't stick to the axle so go ahead and put this pin back into where it went originally and so now we have gear one of column or yeah gear three of column two the bottom gear of column two the drive shaft and then the bottom gear of column three now take the two gears you just glued together and stick those on top of column two and now what we have is the red gear is engaging the bottom of the two gears that we glued together and then the bottom gear is turning the top gear and we'll put the top gear back on the first column the left hand most column
and voila! So now we'll grab the motor and put the motor back onto its axle and we can test to make sure that all the gears are properly engaging with each other. And if you turn the motor by hand and just kind of watch, you know, the gears, you might probably can't really see them on here, but you can see it yourself in person. And make sure that they're all engaged and that they're all turning with each other. And now we just snap the gearbox back together with the motor and the timer and it should work. It takes a little finesse to hold everything in place but you'll get used to it with practice. And now uh, we can plug in the timer and watch and see if the gears actually do turn. Now be careful when you do this. There are lots of terminals, live wires exposed. So I claim no responsibility if any of you kill yourselves by electrocuting yourselves, plugging this thing in with all the bare terminals exposed. So just be really careful when you do it. And now that it's plugged in, we can look and see that yes, in fact, all the gears are turning. Which again, you may not be able to see on the video, but you can see it live in person. So now, unplug the timer. Don't try to stick this thing back in there with it plugged in. Again, warning, bare leads exposed. Do not electrocute yourself. And that just sits on a couple of pegs that rest in there. And then you just pop the top back on. You have to kind of finesse with uh, you know, the switches and the tabs and everything when you put the top back on. But it should just pop more or less right back on. Everything you know should line up. And screw it back together. And you're done. Now this timer originally ran on 24 hours. This one has 96 pins. The other ones that I modified have 48 pins. But they all run on almost exactly a 30 minute cycle. So each tab on the uh, 48 pin, each tab was about 52 seconds. And so on this one, each one should be about 26 seconds. Uh, and uh, saves you about $150. I looked around online, lots of places, to try to find an hour cycle timer, and the cheapest one I found is about 150 This timer here is a two outlet grounded Utilitech 24 hour light timer. It costs about nine bucks at Lowe's. You can also get the standard one outlet non-grounded Utilitech light timers. They cost about seven bucks at Lowe's. And they all have the same gearbox inside. I've looked at about three different Utilitech timers and they all have the same gearbox. There are incredibly negligible differences between the one outlet and the two outlet. Uh, but all of the gears are arranged the same and this modification technique should work for all of them. I've tested this and the motor does not stall out. It still operates and flips on and off. So good luck and enjoy.